Hi, uh, I'm Akshat. I'm the founder of Block Vault. We are a WordPress backup service, and we have been doing this for over six years. This past February was possibly the worst month of my life. And <laughs> is that? Let's give it another shot. Sorry about that. Yeah, so this past February was possibly the worst month of my, uh, of my life. I, I just come back from my honeymoon. And you guys must be thinking, oh, marriage is tough. Marriage is tough, but it's not that bad. Uh, so, we, uh, one dreadful morning, I, uh, one morning I received this dreadful email from a big customer of ours who had many of his sites which had the blog wall plugin installed on it getting hacked. Now, if you are, if you, if you build a plugin or if you deal with WordPress, you'd be like, uh, you are used to thinking that it's maybe it's just some, uh, it's not really you who's causing the WordPress site to get hacked. Sites get hacked so often. So the first question we asked was, was it us? It must have been WordPress itself. That past week, WordPress had a major vulnerability. I don't know if you, rem if you remember, but WordPress 4.7.1 had a major con content injection vulnerability. And that had come out, that had been made public in the last week of January. So we were like, okay, maybe this is related to that. Investigating further, we saw a common pattern. We saw that many of our customer sites were getting hacked in a very similar manner. But how could it be us? We followed the best customer, uh, best security practices. We did in-depth code reviews. It cannot be us. But it was. We had solved hacks earlier. We had helped our customers remove malware from their site. We had helped customers deal with really major WordPress vulnerabilities like Tim Thumb, Gravity Forms. These vulnerabilities had affected millions of sites across the world. We had helped many of our customers deal with this. But this was totally different. We were unprepared for this. We were the culprits here. But it was not as simple as that. Like there were questions to be asked. We knew that some, we were related to the problem. But was it our plugin which was the problem? Was it our servers? Did we get hacked ourselves? It was not clear. We did not know what to do. We did not know what to tell our customers. Even how to tell them, in fact. We had never, we, we would, email our customers once in a blue moon and never really had done bulk emails to all our customers. So how do we even send bulk emails to such a large number of customers, existing and old? We did not have anything in place. One thing we did know was that we are going to help every customer of ours. This was a complex situation. Every website is important. And the customers by themselves have, they are everyday users of WordPress. Some of them are experts, but even then, this is a difficult situation. And we, we knew that we had to help them. The other thing we knew was that there would be no hide and seek. We had to be truthful. The customers themselves had limited understanding of what was going on. And if we did not, if we were not truthful or if we withheld information, then that would make things only worse for customers. We knew these two things for sure, that we had to do these two correctly. Beyond that, so once we had this, we were like, communications played a very major role. We had to come within the team, to our partners, to all our customers. 
communication, it was a stressful situation for each and every one of these within the team and outside. And communication we knew was extremely important. So once we reached out to our customers, everyone, the entire team, eight of us, jumped in and we started helping customers over different channels, chat, email, even phone. We normally provided only email support, but now in this situation, no channel, like every channel was being utilized for the customer support. But it's not that simple. We actually were just running around like headless chicken. There was utter chaos. Eight people doing eight different things. Emails were getting lost. Cleanups were being incomplete. Sometimes we would do the same task again and again. There was, at the beginning, it was just chaos all over. Fortunately, we soon realized that this situation cannot, the situation requires more thought. Cleaning up a few sites mm -hmm. once in a while is easy. Something of this magnitude is not that straightforward. You need to set up plans. You need to set up processes. It can be as simple as creating a document which in, tells our customer how they can find their FTP details from their web host to creating tools to identify malware. We were lucky in many ways that we had some extremely powerful tools within, uh, within uh, uh, our company to help us deal with, such, with malware. But nonetheless, we had to build tools on the fly. So uh, communicating bad news itself is difficult. It is even worse when you don't know the exact reason. We knew that we were the problem, but we did not know exactly where the problem lied. And finding this is non-trivial. We did identify the problem, uh, one of the problems early on. There's this function called unserialize. I don't know if you, if you are developers, you would have definitely come across it. Don't like stay away from that function. That's my, that's my one advice, one takeaway from, from this entire talk. If, but yeah, so we did patch it immediately, but we could not be sure. There were only 20,000 plus installs of Log Vault. How could so many customers get in? So, so many sites get hacked if there are only 20,000 plus sites? Maybe we still had, our servers had been breached too. So we communicated the worst case situation. In hindsight, this was a good thing and a bad thing. We did play it safe by communicating the worst case situation. After our analysis, we realized that the cause was only the vulnerability in plugin, but the message just stuck. So doing this, uh, like, like I mentioned, identifying whether your servers are hacked or not is non-trivial. It means going through terabyte of logs. Non-trivial task. You have to build tools on the fly to identify this. But you have to be committed. We spent a month figuring this out, like going through and identifying whether something was wrong or not. You will get false positives. You will be like, oh, something looks funny there. But it, fortunately, there was nothing, nothing on our systems which were wrong. It was just the plugin. You will end up fixing it. You will end up, when you are combing through your systems, you will find other issues. And you will end up fixing them. Some of these are just distractions. I wished you could, you, uh, you could prioritize correctly. But sometimes you just, as things come your way, you fix, fix the issues as you see them. Mistakes were made, many, many mistakes. We ended up mailing customers whose sites had already been cleaned. Some of them got angry. 
many were confused it was a very very painful process so we are making changes on the fly we are doing these we are building tools as as we as we think of them we are cleaning sites all of this are complex processes make detailed notes as you are making these changes you are touching your customer sites you are removing malware make detailed notes because they will help with communication so there were a few lessons we learned as to what not to do for sure some of these are lessons which are easier said than done the very first one i don't think this would this requires rocket science but do not panic again easier said than done we we would panic and we would make more mistakes fortunately for us there were a couple of couple of people in our team who acted as anchors they ensured that the team was calm and that helped us weather the storm do not shy away from the truth both internally and externally integrity is is the key here there are many situations which are difficult sometimes uh, you need to make difficult decisions and when you know that you are going to be truthful those decisions are easy to be made because there's only one answer in that case all right so when you are dealing with a hack or malware or any of these situations it is difficult it is very very time consuming and there is a tendency to just look inwards huddle together huddle the team together and just try and figure out how do you fix the issue there's a huge strong tendency to do that oh, but remember business is about customers you need to prioritize them finally i think the one of the biggest things that we learned from the situation was how helpful the entire wordpress community was in the process they helped in small and big ways we reached out to security experts who came came in by our, dropped by our offices gave us perspectives at the drop uh, uh, on an urgent basis others who would jump into a skype call and review the emails we would send to our customers because these are complex communications and sometimes the way we would frame it would again be too internally focused it would not, they would and having the community members look into it really helped us finally customers will be your biggest supporters they will be understanding and they will help you occasionally you will find a customer who is very demanding you would want to run away from them but no jump into the call and deal with them some of them might even abuse you but you must understand they are they are going through a difficult situation the websites have been hacked their web host has shut them down it is stressful for them but overall majority of them will be extremely kind at least that has been our understanding finally you will survive and you will come out stronger as in our case thank you thank you very much akshat uh well we we are open to the q and a session if you want to ask anything yes the gentleman at the back please hi thanks for uh, the talk so can you go into detail about what the hack specifically was and um how they were able to get in and what you guys did to poke the hole all right so uh, we use this function called unserialize so if you know uh, in wordpress uh, also but in php you have a, a, a serialization mechanism a data serialization mechanism called serialize and unserialize those are the two functions 
Now, the way unserialized works is it it is an inherently uh, dangerous function to use when not when used over an un, uh, unauthenticated data or unverified data. It can cause a person to execute any code. It gives remote code exploitation. Uh, it opens itself, opens a plugin or a site up to remote code exploitation. So uh, uh, oh, that was the case with us. We'd un unwittingly, we had added unserialize to our uh, to one version of our plugin, and that caused our systems to be exploited. We immediately moved it out and uh, to, a ver uh, to a place where we knew that the input was verified, and that solved the issue. But, but yes, we are not the only ones. After that, we have come across multiple articles being written, which uh, talks about how unserialized should be avoided at all costs, especially on unverified input. Uh, at that time, while we identified the issue, we could not be sure if this is the only issue. We ha our plugin is, uh, we are a paid premium plugin, so we were present on 20,000 plus sites. Now, why would someone, uh, so we thought our systems are compromised to be able to access these 20,000 plus sites. But then we realized that a hacker, the hacker in this particular situation, just attacked thousands and millions of sites around the world. And when you do the math, you realize that it doesn't take that many resources to, uh, to attack million sites for an exploit. All right. Uh, thank you, Akshat. So uh, as Akshat already mentioned, so the first thing that you shouldn't do is panic when such a thing happens, right? Because it's like your worst nightmare come true. Your business is out there. Yeah. and Yes. So, so if anybody else wants to ask any question, because it's a very interesting topic. All right. You can catch him later, maybe, during the tea break later today, if you want to ask anything more. Thank you, Akshay. Thank, Thank you very you. much.